Jameson produced the first fiberglass layup sticks for the telecom industry in 1956, and they were quickly adopted by line clearance professionals because of their strength, durability, and superior insulating properties. Jameson fiberglass poles are non-conductive and ideal for tree trimming line clearance. They're not intended to purposely and repeatedly contact energized equipment, so we don't call them hot sticks. However, industry standards require that any pole used for line clearance conform to the same standards that hot sticks do. So even though we don't call them hot sticks, we must treat them like hot sticks. The pole's insulating properties depend primarily on maintaining the surface condition so that it's smooth, clean, undamaged, and glossy. This prevents moisture from being absorbed and water will bead up on the surface rather than streaking. The following instruction is meant to help you preserve the condition of the pole surface as well as the hardware so that you can work safely. Several industry standards apply. OSHA 1910.269, ANSI Z133, and IEEE 516 all provide guidance for tree trimming line clearance safety and tool care. Most of what you'll hear next is taken directly from those standards. It's up to the user to understand and follow those standards as applied to their job. Always follow your company procedures, always wear your PPE, and remember, ultimately, safety is your responsibility. Two styles of poles are commonly used for line clearance, the JE and the FGA. Both are made from non-conductive fiberglass tubes, both have tremendous insulating properties, and both have foam inside but there are a couple differences. The FGA is manually filled with foam after it's already been made and cut to length. The foam reacts, expands, and hardens. The excess is trimmed from the ends, and then the pole is assembled. The JE pole has an integrated foam core that is actually bonded and cured to the inside of the pole during manufacture. The foam is actually part of the pole. JE poles are individually tested at 100 kV per foot for five minutes and then date stamped for confirmation. FGA poles pass the exact same test but are not date stamped and they are batch tested. Keep your poles clean and dry and out of the sun when not in use. We recommend the Jameson B6V storage bag. Never allow your poles to rattle around in the bed of a truck. Keep them in racks, in a padded area, or inside the bag. Keep them away from other tools and keep them from rubbing against one another. OSHA requires that each pole be wiped down daily before use. This is done with a clean, dry, absorbent cloth or paper towel and may be followed by wiping with a silicone treated cloth. Daily routine cleaning can be done with a pre-saturated wipe that has cleaning solvent and silicone on the same wipe. These are known as hot stick wipes and provide a quick and easy way to clean and provide a moisture barrier at the same time. For more thorough cleaning, apply isopropyl alcohol to a clean rag and wipe the pole. Allow the solvent to evaporate, then finish by wiping with a silicone treated cloth or wipe. Acetone and ketone based solvents are not recommended and never clean the pole with soap and water. Soap can leave behind a film that can harm the insulating properties. While wiping down the pole each day, inspect the surface at the same time. Check the fiberglass for damage that would let moisture under the surface such as deep scratches, cracks, dents, gouges, delamination, or rough spots. Check it for evidence of electrical damage such as burns, blisters, or tracking. Remove the pole from service if any of these conditions are found. If the surface is clean, smooth, and glossy, it's safe to use. If the pole has a good coat of wax on it, minor cosmetic scratches can be okay if they feel smooth. If you are in doubt as to if a scratch would make the pole unsafe, err on the side of caution and remove it from service. Inspect the pole hardware daily. Look for bent, worn, or cracked parts. Make sure the rivets are not loose or stretched. Stretched rivets mean the ferrule has been overstressed and may become loose. A loose ferrule can trap moisture under it. 
If you can fit a thumbnail under the rivet around all sides, remove the pole from service. Check the eye bolts for security and tighten if necessary. Do not over tighten as this could crack the pole. Be sure the female ferrule is not flared or out of round and the edges are free from major nicks or dents. Remove the pole from service if the leaf spring does not spring back and touch the ferrule. This increases the chances that it could become disengaged while working. For male ferrules, check the pinhole to be sure it is not too elongated. Connect a female ferrule to check for excessive slop. If there is more than an eighth inch of slop, consider replacing the male ferrule. Replace worn or damaged parts with Jameson replacement parts. Replacement ferrules with mounting hardware are available. Replace other hardware with equivalent grade or grade five. Never attempt to repair metal parts by deforming or bending. Never repair metal parts by welding. The heat from welding can damage the fiberglass or can weaken the metal parts. As we discussed, remove the pole from service if you discover damage during daily inspection. In addition, remove the pole from service if any of the following criteria apply. The pole feels tingly or fuzzy when contacting an energized conductor. The pole has been inadvertently cleaned with soap and water. The pole has been transported or stored improperly, or if the pole has been left outside for extended periods. Refinishing the pole is done with hard wax. Waxing is not required every day, but it should be done before a pole is returned to service following a repair or whenever the surface loses its gloss. Qualified personnel should remove dirt and wax buildup with a fine textured, non-metallic scouring pad. Afterwards, wipe with alcohol and a clean dry cloth. Apply hot stick wax according to wax instructions. This is a general purpose insulator wax that works well. No more than two coats are required. Whenever a pole is removed from service, it should be examined, repaired as necessary, and tested by qualified personnel. Testing confirms that the insulating properties have been restored. Even brand new poles should be tested to verify they haven't been compromised during shipping and handling. This also provides baseline test data for comparison later. In-service testing is performed by applying 75 kV per foot of fiberglass for one minute. Other test methods can be used if deemed equivalent, and this would include the use of handheld testers. All testers should measure leakage current. Leakage current is the measure of current that flows across the surface of the pole. Acceptable levels of leakage current are determined by your historical data. All poles should be tested wet and tested dry. Wet testing confirms that the pole is not absorbing moisture and that it can bead water on its surface. If a pole cannot pass wet testing after being reconditioned, it should be permanently removed from service. Jameson poles are designed and manufactured to industry specifications and will maintain their insulating properties only if cared for properly. It is the user's responsibility to protect and maintain the pole. So follow these guidelines, follow your industry standards, and follow your company procedures. Your safety depends on it.